Hi guys, Deirdre Malumbi here and I'm joined today by Ken Wardrobe. Ken is actually the filmmaker behind a new Irish documentary called Making the Grade, which is this super, super sweet movie about students of all levels learning to play the piano. Thanks so much for joining me today, Ken. Thank you, Deirdre. Congratulations on Making the Grade. Like I said, this is such a sweet movie. It's so charming and I just left the cinema like with a big beam on my face when I saw it. Well, that's a great response. Yes. I, mean, I, I guess when you start uh, any project, you're not, never quite sure how it will end up. Mm -hmm. And because I was really enjoying the process of making this film, I, I kind of guessed early on this is going to be a really good, feel good film. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was great because actually when you hear it, you th uh, hear about it, piano playing and so forth, you might think it, it's a bit academic mm -hmm. and may get a little bit too much, uh, too much focus on the actual playing, mm -hmm. but really at the heart of it is the relationships and the connections that teachers and students have, which we know we, it's a universal, we've all experienced it, we know the highs, the lows and the potential comedy value, you know, and uh, lightheartedness that's involved. So. That's Thank, it's lovely to hear that you enjoyed yes, it. <laughs> I did thoroughly. Um, going back to the very start, can you tell us a bit about where the idea for the movie originally came from? Well, I suppose, firstly, I had a deadline. It's an Arts Council project mm -hmm. and we had a proposal to put in and I was looking around within my own world for ideas and it coincided with a, a bit of a renovation work that we were doing in the house and I had to extend our walls by 10% not 10 percent, 10 centimeters <laughs> with uh, some insulation and it meant the alcove that had the piano in it mm. was now too small to have a piano and my partner who plays piano a lot and and is actually a pianist or he plays in restaurants and stuff mm -hmm. so he he was very um disturbed sorry devastated <laughs> it's too, uh, that he was going to lose the piano and we mm. had to downsize so um it kind of started me thinking about pianos and their place in our worlds because mm -hmm. I think it is the one instrument that's kind of, if there was a queen or a king of instruments, it would be the piano. A lot of homes around the country have obsolete old ones that, don't, you know, that maybe some kid started to learn and gave up. And I thought, here we go, there might be something in this. And also, I suppose, maybe somewhere in the back of my mind, I used to sit on the stool of my granny who played piano and used to play the organ in church. Mm -hmm. Now, she wasn't very good at it, God love her, but she was the only, there were only two players, so mm -hmm. she would be the sub. And so she would stress out a little bit in advance of the service on a, on a Sunday, knowing that she was going to have to perform. And I was given the duty of turning the page of course, I had no idea where we were. She kind of nods <laughs> aggressively and then I turn and we were like kind of coordinated. And um, that was always fun, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe that was in the back of my mind, too. Yeah. yeah. So all of these different all these little things yeah. came up and I went, Eureka, piano. Yeah. That's always what happens. It's all these kind of different ideas coalescing. I think yeah. that that's the way a lot of these things happen. It is a quite a long uh, winded answer though, <laughs> isn't it? Because I probably had a few more strands <laughs> to that story. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Another thing I love about this film is just your range of subjects in it from young to old because you have a lot of young people but there are also some like quite characters you know you have the American teacher and then there's a nun and there's the woman who comes back to piano playing having not played the piano for years. So how did you actually find your subjects and how did you then go through the process of actually choosing them because it must have been quite quite a challenge. Yeah, well, firstly, I worked with two really good researchers on mm -hmm. this project and my colleagues, Seamus Waters and Brian Raftery. And we decided to cut the country in four and get a really good geographical spread. Mm. I really wanted a sense of modern Ireland and great, you know, flavor of accents mm -hmm. and worlds. And then once we did, we divided it all up, we really just started by teachers. That was our main focus, let's find teachers. And nowadays, you know, given the everybody has websites and Facebook pages and stuff, so they throw all through the different music schools and so forth. And once we'd found a good, really good range, we would then go in and talk to different teachers in schools and mm -hmm. see which maybe had the right fit. Maybe we were looking for a grade five and they had four grade five students and we we're like, okay, let's. So it, it was kind of, um, 
it evolved mm -hmm. and then of course we wanted to find the kind of like we've got Eileen down in Crosshaven in Cork and she only has four or five students so she wouldn't have had a web page or anything and that was just word of mouth mm -hmm. I was talking to a friend who'd be and I, she was like oh you must I was taught by Eileen when I was like so just you like know, different little connections yeah, yeah and then yeah, suddenly it, it spread mm -hmm. and and we got lucky also I have to say that um, you know filmmaking is complicated in the sense that you do sometimes follow stories that don't end up fitting in the overall narrative. So in amongst, you know, we, we lost a few and that was really difficult mm. as a filmmaker because you've invested time, spent time with people mm -hmm. and then you're not, not able to fit it in because of whatever there could have been just a, a story too similar yeah, to something yeah. else and, and so forth. So I think actually we probably have another film yeah. of all the other stories that, you know, we could have... Mm -hmm on another occasion fitted in. So. Yeah, yeah. I know that you mentioned the last time I was speaking with you that you get asked about this a lot, but I am going to ask you because I'm sure it's something that aspiring filmmakers are always wondering. Yeah. And it's the fact that you always are able to create this like just sense of comfort with your subjects. They're really able to kind of open up and just be themselves. How do you manage that? Because surely that is the dream for like any documentary maker that you're able to just create this atmosphere where people can, you know, feel totally at ease and just be themselves. Well, there's a few things. I think mm -hmm. you have to remember that this project was, um, you know, the sell was not very difficult. Mm. We were making a film to celebrate the piano lesson and piano playing, mm -hmm. which it brings so much joy to mm -hmm. the people who are learning. There's so much energy and passion from the teachers who are, uh, you know, helping people on this journey. So it was an easy sell. We weren't doing an expose or a journalistic, you know, investigation into this. So. I think um, the, just telling people about the project and getting their buy-in was very mm -hmm. straightforward. People were like, just get it. It's like, oh yeah, why wasn't there a film made about this subject before? They've spent their lives uh, you know, in this space. They realize how engaging it could be. So that's that to one side. And then obviously when you meet and there's a camera involved, everybody's nervous. I'm nervous today from sitting in front of these cameras <laughs> with you, lovely Deirdre. <laughs> but, you know, this is this is part of our, you know, we, we have um, to build a rapport, build mm -hmm. a trust and, and, and so forth. And I tend to like, obviously give as much time over to getting to know someone, even though we're only with them for a day or two. Mm -hmm. So you have the tea, you have the chats, you know, and kind of then, before you turn yeah, on the camera, of course. Yeah, yeah, and I you can you. see from today, I talk a lot. So by the time I shut up, they're just delighted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I think it's a case of getting people excited about it, getting and forgetting about the camera. I also let the camera to you know I don't really move it much. Mm. So at some stage of the process, we all forget about the camera yeah. being there because it's been there for a while. I'm not running around in people's faces mm -hmm. or, you know, and in the piano lesson, each lesson would be 30 minutes in reality. So I think I said, let's make it an hour. We'd mm -hmm. arrive, we'd have the chats, we'd set up the camera. And so we only really had half an hour filming, which sure, would have been yeah. a normal lesson that they'd have to get through their daily routine. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, well, a lot of the cases, I think we were on the day that they would have had the lesson anyway and so forth. So yeah. um, it wasn't too much of an imposition. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up actually pulling back the camera because that was something that really struck me about this movie, this cinematography. Because so often in like feature, like more fiction films, I suppose, you have like the dramatic kind of over the head camera shots or, you know, the close ups of the fingers on the keys or whatever. But you really kind of paired back and really emphasized the people. Was that kind of a conscious decision made, something that you wanted to do even from earlier? early stages? Um, it's my style, to yeah. be honest. You know, I do do that. I enjoy not imposing myself on it. Mm -hmm. And also, look, I came late to filmmaking. I wasn't brought up in a world of, you know, where I think nowadays everybody's subjected to so much um, film mm -hmm. and entertainment and so forth and kids are running around with cameras, moving them and yeah. making their own videos. On iPhones and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I kind of, I didn't, ha so I came back at 26 to make films, <laughs> a mature student, I didn't have that kind of sensibility. So I, I, from the very early stages, I took baby steps and I just sort of did, did things really simply. And then I thought, wait a minute, this seems to be working and I'm not like really, so I kept to the simple <laughs> things. So I don't really have a, 
And this is like me being honest about mm. being a filmmaker. I don't have a film language per se that is up there with some other filmmakers. I play to my strengths and that's getting to know people and, you know, chatting and kind of creating um, worlds that are simplified. Mm -hmm. And yet I do give the frame um, a level of importance. I mm -hmm. like it to be tidy and neat and constructed and mm -hmm. pleasant. Yeah. And I do have an aesthetic eye in that way. But I also have ambitions to go beyond that. And now, mm -hmm. you know, I'm mid forties now. So yeah. I've been, I don't get away with saying I'm, I'm a young filmmaker or anything, you yeah. know, so. Speaking of, because I was kind of thinking about like, in terms of what you're doing in the future, because your past films would be his and hers. I think everyone kind of knows about that. You know, it toured for like a couple of years even. <laughs> and then Mom and Me was a lovely one as well. And I think that your three kind of core feature documentaries so far share in common that they look at very Irish subjects and then they're all kind of orientated around relationships. Is that the kind of subject matter that you'd like to stick to in the future or maybe kind of go more international into different kind of topics? Um, I don't know if international would be the right word. Yeah. I, I would like to um, express myself slightly differently, I guess. I think relationships will always be the core of my films. It's something that I enjoy. I think it's, it's something that I, I'm no expert in any mm -hmm. particular area um, and I have no huge cause that I need to tackle. And there are other filmmakers doing that and doing mm. it far better than I could anyway. The one thing about my films is I'm always meeting new people yeah. and finding out new things and educating myself and making friends along the way and, and so forth. So each project has enriched me and I would hate to lose that mm -hmm. aspect of filmmaking too. So I need to balance both sides, the creative side mm -hmm. with the human side mm -hmm. and ensure that I can find the next step. You know, mm -hmm. I'll probably return to something very similar in, yeah. you know, in a few films time. Gosh, <laughs> who knows? I probably would. Like, it's such, it's a, such a wonderful opportunity to get mm -hmm. to make a film. And I feel such a responsibility because someone has entrusted their, you know, funds with you. And it's so competitive out there amongst mm -hmm. filmmakers. There's only a certain pot of money. So I, I, you know, to think that I'd be afforded another opportunity mm -hmm. to make a film is being a bit um, blasé about it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't want to be because, um, who knows, I may never come up with another idea that anyone will want to see. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So uh, then my very last question for you, Ken, was so far the film has kind of toured, well, not quite toured around the country, but it's had its premiere at the Lighthouse. My mum and sister actually saw it, by the way, and they loved it. They oh. said there were loads of young people at it, actually, which was great. Yeah. Um, I think you showed it in Palos, in Galway. Yes, that's right. And the IFI as well. No, it? the IFI is tomorrow night. Okay, the On IFI Friday is the 13th is the opening Perfect. night. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, but so far of wherever it's screened, um, what has the response been like from people? Have there been any like surprises? Yeah, it's been actually really lovely to see it. I mean, we've sh showed it a few screenings to the uh, subjects that have been involved. So we'd have their families and I always find they're great and really important. And I'm a nervous wreck at those ones because they're the most important to me. And but there's always a nervous energy in the room and people don't settle until their moment has passed and mm -hmm. so forth. So those screenings are quite different because there's a lot of uh, uh, I suppose just nervousness mm -hmm. <laughs> and we also screened it in America because it was at the South by Southwest oh, Film that's Festival right. yeah, yeah. and that was wonderful to see mm -hmm. an American audience connecting with it and it really did translate and I think the, it, it remains sort of universal what's going on mm -hmm. in, in the film and again you know if you're American and you've been through any sort of educational uh, scenario where you're one-on-one -on -one with a teacher you'll understand and connect with it and uh, music obviously you know it's mm -hmm. it's one of those subject matters that I think we all that's just um, universal yeah it's universal yeah, yeah. exactly so fingers crossed audiences still engage with it and enjoy it and as you said mm -hmm. what is surprising are young people mm -hmm. are enjoying it and I did the test I, I'm a terrible man for testing it with my friends and everything <laughs> and of course they're the worst people to ask because they're going to be lovely anyway no matter how poor it is but I did send it by uh, to a link to my friend over in Barcelona who's got two kids who are eight and ten and I thought this was a good response he's like we've watched it twice again my kids never like and they Aww. but they play musical instruments yeah. I suppose but even still I didn't expect kids to be watching it you know so uh, that's that's a lovely outcome 
That's brilliant. Thanks so much for that, Ken. So Making the Grade is out from Friday the 13th, but it's there's nothing unlucky about it and you will leave <laughs> the cinema, I guarantee you, with a big beam on your face. So make sure to check it out.